Hello, my name is Omri Bar. I lead the AI research group at uh, Theater. I'm very excited to be taking part in this year PyTorch Developer Day. And in today's talk, I want to show a bit of the work that we are doing at Theater and how we use PyTorch to develop machine learning models for the surgical domain. So although millions of minimally invasive procedures are done each year and all are guided using a camera and produce a video feed, they are not analyzed and most of the time not even stored. But there is a lot of important information inside those videos and we can use them to improve the performance and quality of surgeons and eventually improve uh, patient care. So in order to analyze this information, our surgical intelligence platform is combining both data from the EMR and EHR and take it along with data that comes from the video. And I wanna focus here in this talk only on the machine learning parts that are related to the visual data engine. So this is an, a high level sketch of uh, the data flow. Once the operation has ended, the video first go through a de-identification de process inside the operation room on the edge device, and then uploaded to our cloud where it will pro be processed with a, an automatically AI annotator uh, system. At this point, which is instantly after the surgery is done, the surgeon can review the video, see the annotations and learn from it. Uh, in parallel, two annotators will look at the same uh, video and those annotation and adjust them. And in, in the end of this process, the new annotation will be propagated back to the surgeon, but also back to the system in order to support continuous learning. Here are some examples for AI capabilities or specific tasks that we are interested in. And I want to show two specific examples just to put things in context. So first, as I mentioned, anonymization for the de identification. And here the goal is to take the raw video, which we see here on the left, and using a machine learning detect when the camera is pulled out of the patient body and basically blur those frames. So the model that we develop is taking the entire video input, breaks it into uh, small chunks represented by clips, we process them using a 3D convnet that gives us a feature map. And then we use an MLP, a small MLP network in order to uh, get the binary decision if this is an in-body or out-body uh, frame. Another important uh, task is steps recognition. And here what we want to do is be able to detect for each second in the video from what part of the surgeon workflow it came from. Here is another example for uh, now for appendectomy. We are seeing the video running fast forward. Uh, on top, we have both the human annotation and what the model predicted. And once we get to a transition uh, step, we, the video will slow down and we can see that when the tool will be entering now from the right, both the model and soon after also the human will uh, replace the step. Here we can see the model switched and now also uh, the human annotation. So similarly to out of body, we take the full video, break it into clips, process it with the 3D convnet. And here, instead of a binary head, we have uh, an RNN uh, like an LSTM that process the entire uh, feature vectors and gives us uh, the prediction for each second of the correct step. So you can imagine that with those many tasks, it's very hard to, to scale uh, this system and maintain its training. If we're only looking at four specific examples, for each one of them, we need to build the clips model, the 3D convnet, uh, represent the feature, and then train a specific head. And all of this is gonna be done for each specific procedure uh, separately. And as we are uh, scaling and going through working on, on more procedures, this is a very uh, hard task to maintain. So the architecture that we develop is based on uh, multitask learning. And here we take different video from random procedure and we process it using a shared backbone that is, is shared across all procedures and all tasks. 
And it gives us the same feature uh, representation that I showed before, but, it, but now it was learning on many procedures. And then using a round robin, we can train each task at each different batch separately and back propagate the error and the loss back to the original shared backlog. All of this is done using PyTorch capability to do things like gradient accumulation between the different tasks, running partial gradients and partial sharing inside the network, both the shared backbone and also connecting between different tasks. We also want to be able to customize the various heads. As I showed before, some of the models will be a more uh, classic binary models while other might be RNN or uh, more object detection uh, models. And finally, for each specific task, we need to build and design its own uh, data flow, which means a different data loader, a different data set, and a different sampler. And all of this is done using uh, PyTorch capabilities. So the question that we ran into is what will be the best uh, shared backbone to use in this flow? And the 3D coordinates has some disadvantages in this scope uh, in terms of runtime flops. It requires these two steps training, first getting the feature and then training the head separately. It has some problems uh, processing very long videos like we can have in surgical. And using a single back propagation to propagate the mistake from the head back to the original clip is not trivial. So we published uh, recently a work called Video Transformer Network, which we presented at the last uh, ICCV uh, workshop conference. And this network uh, basically tackled all the issues that we had with the 3D convenets. It can able, uh, it enable us to process very long video, gives more accurate results. It reduces dramatically the training and inference runtime while requiring less flops. And maybe the most important thing is that it's modular and generic, which we, means we can use it as part of the shared backbone, but also replace which model that we want uh, um, to fit to the multitask learning architecture. Here are some of the results that we show in the paper, which are done no, not on the surgical uh, data, but on a video benchmark like uh, Kinetics 400, where VTN achieve better results than other uh, state-of-the-art model. And this is an, a nice example for the attention that uh, our model learns, which is super important in surgical. On the video on the right, we see uh, the frames from a video from Kinetics 400 of a, an abseiling video. And once the frames are more related to predicting the right category, we will see that the numbers goes up and those represent the CLS token weights for the first attention layer, which means like we see here, when we see the rope or the shackle, the numbers are much higher than we see people talking or just standing. And it means that the network can learn uh, to intend to those area or segments in the video that helps it uh, get the right prediction. Here are some references uh, for the paper and also we publish uh, the code for VTN uh, as part of the Slowfest repository. Uh, and we are also presenting in the poster session uh, more details about this network. So please come and visit us and we can talk more about this work. And recently PyTorch released a library called PyTorch Video uh, which wasn't exist when we started to, to do this work, but if you're entering the video domain, um, I recommend using it. It's gonna make many of, uh, of the stuff uh, very intuitive and, and easy to, to plug. So to summarize, uh, theater is building a surgical intelligence platform that takes both the video, the patient info and the surgeon and combine everything into an indexed procedure that the surgeon can learn from. And all of our framework is powered by PyTorch from research and exploration to all the continuous training system up to our production uh, packages. All of this work is done by our amazing AI research group. And thank you very much. Hope to see you at the poster session. <laughs>